Hey guys, in this video I'm going to go over all the features we have, including sniping, mass bidding, auto bidding, trade bidding, analysis, notifications, profit calculation, uh, flipping and a lot more. So uh, I'm going to start with reveals and sniping because we just implemented this utility and we are getting many questions about how it works. So what happens is if you are a premium member, means that if you are a founder member of, or a lifetime member, when a collection reveals, it automatically sends you a notification on Discord. And when you click on it on the NFT init page, you see that the collection is going to be revealing uh, it will start from 0%. Uh, by the time you click it, it's going to be probably already 30% or even maybe 50%. And it is going to reveal to 100. It depends on the met metadata. Sometimes they limit the reveal. Sometimes they distribute it over days. But in most cases, it's going to reveal to, let's say, 90% plus. Uh, and here you will see that the system will be able to pull the metadata before they are visible on OpenSea. So this actually just revealed uh, how many minutes ago? I think about like almost 20 minutes ago. And as you notice, there is no properties on OpenSea yet. However, the system lets you know the properties and the system lets you know the rankings before anybody who are not using sniping tools can see them. So uh, usually we reveal collections below 40 seconds. It can depend on the asset size. If it is less than 10,000, it is usually going to be even faster. But for collections which are about 10,000 asset size, uh, the reveal time is usually around 40 seconds or less. So what happens is, in this collection, actually, you can check it. By the time you watch this video, probably it will have revealed on OpenSea as well. Uh, you will notice that this specific NFT will have the traits that we show here. So what you can do is, while, while it is revealing, you can uh, enter your price here, like maybe show me NFTs which are being listed right now. So I'm just going to enter a super small value here. And the system will show you the possible uh, best NFTs that you can buy. So obviously this one, which is rank one, is being sold for 0.25 years. If you like to buy it, you can buy it here. But I suggest you, you to use the fast buy option because there is going to be a lot of competition and we are not on the sniping tool. So what this does is the fast buy button, it actually buys the NFT with the preset value. So if you really want to get this NFT and if you want to be ahead of the competition, you can use uh, more gas to get it faster than your competitors. Uh, you can go for instant, mad, but be keep in mind that they are dynamic and they change by the gas price. So what you can do if you don't want to get affected and if you just want to pay a specific value, you can also set a custom gas price. Then it's going to be uh, static, so it's not going to change. However, in most cases, you can check the gas price and you can just uh, set it on fast or instant, depending on uh, the competition, of course. If, there is, if it is a super popular uh, collection, there is going to be a lot more competition in it, so you might want to burn more gas. Uh, however, if you click on either one of them and if you click on fast buy, the system is going to pop up the MetaMask and then you can complete the transaction. Keep in mind that though, there are some scams going on on OpenSea. So you have to make sure that these two prices match because sometimes they list it for 0.039. However, when you go to the listing, they quickly change it. I think it's a bug in on OpenSea. They change it to 0.39. So they make you pay 10 times more. So you have to be really careful about it. Also, I suggest that you uh, watch the price here as well. So you make sure that these three, three values actually match with, with each other. So I'm going to go ahead with the auto purchasing part. Uh, we are actually developing a whole cockpit that is just de uh, dedicated to auto purchases, but we don't have it out yet. Probably we will have it in the next 10, 15 days. Uh, it's going to be the same logic. So if by the time uh, you are watching the video, the cockpit is out, you, uh, I can say that it has the same logic behind. So this should be sufficient for you. Uh, what happens is, uh, it, it, this is for free users, by the way. If you enable the alert sounds, the system is going to play a sound whenever an NFT that is listed in your criteria, uh, it's just going to play a catching sound. 
so you will know it so if you're a free user you can leave it on you can actually leave it on on multiple tabs and when an nft is listed in your criteria you can come here and just uh, buy it manually however if you are a lifetime user you can use the enable auto buy with metamask button on so what happens is you enter your criteria here again if if you don't enter any criteria just keep in mind that it is going to pop the metamask for each and every transaction let me clear this transaction so, so if anything gets listed it actually pops up uh, this system is going to pop up the metamask and then you are going to click on the sign button and the system is going to make the purchase for you uh, keep in mind that uh, here actually something got listed so as you see the system just popped up the metamask uh, let's see what got listed this one so keep in mind that the system is going to work with your preset gas value uh, you can change it or you can keep it in a mat setting in, in instant setting or in your custom settings uh, as i mentioned if you don't enter anything here the system is just going to pop up anything so for the founders version uh, the founders version is this one we minted this uh, a month ago and no not this one uh, the founder version is this one and we minted it a month ago uh, it got sold out during the early sale uh, we provide them the auto buy with private key functionality so what happens is uh, you enter your max price let's say i want to get something uh, under uh, 0.3 however i want it to be in the top 50 so if something gets listed here while you have the metamask uh, while you have the auto buy on the system uh, actually buys it in the back end for you so this is the most advanced uh, option i would say and this is only for the founding members uh, you ha will have to enter your private key and i should warn you private key is like gi giving someone your private key is like giving keys to your apartment so go if you are going if you are considering buying an uh, founder version just go ahead to the discord and read my announcements about the uh, security i encourage everybody to use a burner vault anyway that's another topic there is a lot of discussion about it in discord if you are interested in security uh, i would suggest you go there talk with the other members how they are doing it and also read my security announcements uh, you can also do the same thing for the trades. Let's actually go to another collection. Uh, let's go to Ninja Scout Official. So in some collections, you will notice that some specific trades are selling for a lot higher than the floor price. Right now, the floor price of this collection is 0.36. Let's check it on the OpenSea as well. Uh, actually, let me just show you how it works on OpenSea. So there are some certain traits in this case it should be uh deep alpha trait they for some reason i'm not going to go into details but for some reason these are almost selling for 10 times the floor price so if you are after something like this and it's especially important uh, right after the reveals because sometimes people they just people don't know that they have a very certain specific valuable trait maybe sometimes even legendaries so they list them for cheap i remember in this collection this is a turkish collection so i've been watching them closely uh, some of these nfts with this uh, specific trait got sold for like 0.15 or something they got sold for super cheap the, the reason was i think the people didn't realize that they have that specific trait because this can be uh there are only 100 in this collection so maybe they checked they said you know what like mine is not super rare it is in the first 500 so i will just sell it for like a couple times of the floor price but in reality uh, their nfts were a lot more valuable than they uh, thought so what you can do is you can go to this collection you can actually just type it here you can type uh, deep alpha and then uh, you can do the exact same things i just showed you you can enable the sound alarms free users can do it you can enable to auto buy with metamask uh, lifetime uh, members can do it or if you're a founder member you can also uh, use enable auto buy with the private key so the system you can you just keep the tabs open and whenever an nft in this criteria with this selected trait gets listed the system buys it for you uh, you can also check the floor price of those uh, special NFTs here by using the trade filters. 
uh, let's check just deep alpha here and then I'm just going to uh, I, I want to see the ones that are actively listed right now so as you see you can just uh, list them according to the price as you see we, we just as we so, just saw on uh, the OpenSea page the floor price of this specific trade is actually three you can do the same when there's a reveal. If there is a certain trade that you are after, when the collection is revealing, you can again select the trade here. And uh, when an NFT with that trade in the price range gets listed, the system is just going to show it here. So you can use this one for collections that have already revealed a while ago or collections that are currently being revealed. Uh, from here, I'm just going to go to the bidding section. There is actually a lot that we will have to talk about, including analyzes, charts, comparisons, uh, mobile version. But let's uh, have one step at a time. Okay, so in the bidding mode, we have a couple of different options. I'm just going to place bids on this uh, particular collection again, which was Ninja Squad official. Our bidding is, I would say, quite fast. Probably we are the fastest in the market. Uh, but I'm not just not going to brag too much. You guys can see it, test it yourself. So what you can do here, actually, you can add more than one thread to make it even faster. Actually, this should start from 1 to 3,000, 3,000 to uh, 6,000, and 6,000 to 8,888. So I want to place bids. I'm just going to start with the competitive option on uh, if you want to place bits let's say between 0.25 actually you know what let me demonstrate in a better way from 0.15 to 0.3 what this means is the system is going to check the nft and the current price current bid on the nft if it is let's say 0.20 the system is going to go above the current bit by just slightly a bit so it's just going to adjust the bit. It will make your bit the highest one. However, it will keep you under the max bit. So if the current bit is uh, higher than your max bit, the system is not going to place any bit in order to keep you in your wet spent limit. You can uh, adjust the time here. I will just, I'm just, you can place one hour. I'm just going to make a fast one, 25 minutes. Uh, I'm just going to repeat it here and I'm just going to enter my private key uh, after the settings are done. I'm just going to go over a couple more settings here uh, in order to finish them fast. If you keep the looping on, the system is going to keep actually looping on the collection, meaning that once the bidding process is over, the system is going to start bidding again. Uh, you, you may want to use this in order to be more competitive. You can just pick shorter expire times and keep looping on the collection. So if somebody is coming behind you and even overbidding you, uh, you can make the system just scan them over and over again, loop on them over and over again, and just uh, keep uh, increasing the bit up to your max bit. Uh, you can also make the system stop for, let's say, 20 minutes before starting the loop again. Uh, some people actually found our bidding uh, super fast, so they wanted to slow the bidding. So you can turn this off, toggle this off, and you can slow down the bids per second. I'm going to uh, demonstrate the private key bidding option first. So let me export my private key. Keep in mind that this is not the secret key. This is the private key. This is not the secret phrase. Uh, I just pasted it here. This is only for founding members again. However, uh, the one for lifetime members is quite fast as well. I'm going to demonstrate in a second. So when you submit bids, the system will show you the settings you entered. And when you start bidding, the system is just going to start placing bids. If there are any error logs here, it will show it here. There can be many uh, different reasons. It's usually around 1% because sometimes there are items that are on auction and you can't place a bid on them. Uh, like there are different reasons. Uh, I will say it is under 5%, but usually it is around like 1% or sometimes even lower. So let's go to my profile and check how it is going. I Let's on my activity tab. Here, 
And here you see that there are like different uh, prices. So because I would say this one already had an uh, offer on it. Actually, maybe even this one too, because the minimum value we entered by was, if I'm not wrong, 0.15. So let's check. Uh, yeah, so that was this one. The system went over it, as you see it. And then this one, however, had an even higher bit. So the system went slightly uh, above it as well. All right, so let's go ahead with the trade bidding. And this time I'm not going to use the private key. You can see the speed, it's pretty fast. And what you can do is, uh, before I go into uh, trade bidding, you can actually open even multiple tabs. The limit is your computer. If your ca computer can uh, handle it, you can even add more threads to it. Uh, we limit the thread per page to three. However, you can use different tabs. I usually suggest people to stick to six because I'll, after that, the resources of the Chrome is a little bit too much, but it's up to you. Try it, uh, find the most optimal point for you. All right, as we speak, actually, it made already 300 bits. Imagine we had two tabs, it was going to be 600. Anyway, so I'm uh, stopping it and I'm going to go ahead with the uh, click bidding. This is the uh, method that lifetime members can do and it is quite fast again. Uh, so this time, uh, actually, just let me plain show how it works. Uh, it doesn't work on the background. You would probably need to use a clicker and I'm just going to show it how it, uh, how it would look like. So I'm starting bidding again. This time it will start uh, popping up the MetaMask, right? Oops, sorry. And here I use this clicker. Uh, I actually refrain myself from suggesting any clicker because after all they are exe files. So you have to do your own research and you do your security checks. Anyway, so what you do is you click here first and then you click here. You tell the uh, program to click here and then click there. So. When you leave it, it just starts clicking. I hope my head is not head is not covering the area, uh, but actually it is just moving the cursor super fast and it keeps signing it. I'm going to stop it in a second. As you see, it's pretty fast and still you can do the uh, more than one tap trick uh, so that it's actually even faster, but I, I just set it to one second. So it is approving them every one second. You can do it actually a bit faster, but I think one second per bit is quite good. Uh, but you can go a lot faster. Just try it, find it yourself. Uh, so let's go to my profile. I, it's already placed like almost 40 bits. Uh, yeah, that, that's how it works. Sometimes OpenSea would lag a little bit. So when you refresh it, you will see your new bits. Yeah, it takes up to 10 seconds. Uh, you can do the, if you're a lifetime user, you can use the trade bidding again. Before I forget, you don't have to... Uh, bits by the token id you can also tell the system to place bits only to the uh, first hundred uh, nfts in the collection what i'm going to do is actually let me just set it back to 3000 and i'm go just going to demonstrate the uh, trade bidding this time so let's say i want to bid on deep alphas only uh, the special trade that i just showed you uh, so yeah, I'm just going to pick Deep Alpha for three of the threads, for all of them, in other words. All right. So, and this time, since they are obviously selling for three Ethereum, I'm just going to place bits of, let's say, six to one. Actually, this is still a little bit too low because the floor price of it, like, is three. I mean, you have to make logical bits, right? Like, those people know that it is being sold for three, so I don't think anybody would sell it to you for one. But just for the sake of demonstration, uh, let's uh, start the system again. Uh, right, so the trades are still here. I'm just going to sub... Actually, let me clear the history. And I'm just going to submit bits again. All right, so this time I expect the system to place bits only on those special trades. I can run the uh, auto clicker. So while I'm having a sip. Yeah, let, let, let's let the system place like, I don't know, 10, 15 bits. I really hope my head is not closing it, but uh, you got the idea anyway. Anyway, it's a uh, place like, I think, like 15. Uh, I'm just going to go to the OpenSea and let's see if the system actually plays the bits on the correct NFTs. 
And yeah, here you go. As you see, all of them has uh, deep alpha trades. And I'm the highest bit. There was now, yeah, that this there was only this one. This is already below my uh, default bit. So the system just placed the default bits. And you see they are all deep alpha. Uh, so this is for this is what the lifetime users can do. If you want it fully automated, you have to go for the founders version. But this one, I mean, if you it's not as fast as founders, but it's still pretty fast. I would say it is still the. I mean, even if you leave the uh, private leave the private key functions out, this is probably the, still the fastest one in the market. But then, if you want to go super fast, if you want to fully automate it, you may want to consider uh, founder version. All right. So there are uh, a couple more things here. Maybe I I will just go with over fast. Uh, if you toggle this on, the system only places bits on NFTs that are currently listed, that are currently actively listed. There is this. Uh, I think that that's pretty much all. Uh, we are going to add some more advanced settings. We have been collecting some feedback. Uh, so you are going to probably see very soon a advanced, an advanced settings uh, field here. So you can make more adjustments. But uh, even with this, I think it is uh, very advanced compared to what we have in the market right now. Anyway, so let's stop bidding and go ahead and see how we will decide on what price to bid. It's just not not just for bidding actually it also works for your flipping strategies but uh, we were bidding on ninja squad here right when you uh, type ninja squad here the system pulls the data uh, it also pulls the collection uh, royalty which is commission in other words and it lets you make the calculation in a very fast and decent way so if I was offering 0.25 here, and if I was going to sell an NFT, sell this NFT as soon as somebody accepts my offer on the floor price again, I would be making this much profit. Plus, you would have to delete the gas fee because when your bid is accepted, the seller pays the gas fee. Uh, this is one thing that most people don't really know. So I'm going to repeat it again. If you buy an NFT regular way, if you just go to OpenSea, just if you just buy it uh, from the buy button, you are the one who is paying the gas fee, right? However, if you if somebody accepts your bid, the seller pays the gas fee. So this, this actually leaves you more room for your profitability. And the list gas fee is usually around, we just uh, entered it 0.085, uh, but it's usually more around like 0.02, 0.03. So this would be your profitability. If you toggle this button on, uh, the system is going to dynamically update the buy gas fee according to the actual gas fee on the market. But you, uh, mo in most cases, you this might be a little bit like complicated because if you are buying it through bits, uh, you would have to delete it each time. So anyway, it's not a big deal. So here, uh, don't just focus on bidding, but just imagine that the system showed you. Uh, actually, you know what? Just let me refresh this page and let me do it everything, do everything from the scratch. Uh, so I'm just going to give you a couple of tips too. So uh, if I had bought this NFT on the floor, and if I just had resold it on the floor again, I would be I, I would have made this much loss, right? 0.05. So if I buy this NFT on the floor, I'm not talking about bidding, I'm just talking about buying an NFT on the floor. The system also shows you how much you should be selling it uh, in order to maybe not to make a loss. It is probably around 0.42. So if you buy it on this price, you would have to wait for the collection to get to this price in order to not make any loss. However, the biggest uh, difference here is going to the collection royalty. So there are some collections which has lower royalties, like Mibits. I think Mibits has like zero royalty. Yeah. And there are, I think even Muffers. Muffers has, I think, uh, let me guess, 2.5%. Uh, yeah, it was already here. So anyway, so uh, with this kind of collections, you would be making more money from your flips, from your bids, because basically you are paying less money to the collection itself as commission. 
So just work on this a little bit uh, and then get the hang of it. It will help you not only with bidding, but also with your decisions when you are making a purchase. All right. So I'm just going to go to the filters and how the system works. Uh, so on the left side, there are many filters. This is, by the way, the profit calculator is 100% for free. And this section is 100% for free as well. You can use the filters on the left side. Uh, you know what, let me just, maybe I don't have so much budget right now, so I want collections to up to a floor price of maximum one. And I just learned about the royalty thing, so I just want to get uh, something that is below 5% royalty. So when you set your filters and apply filters, the system is just going to filter out the uh, relevant results here. And like Kwame Genesis, it has 5% royalty and you can see the daily sales here. You can just toggle the uh, filters on and off. Uh, you might want to look for active collections. You might want to have it. Uh, you might want to have the collection to have at least, let's say, 500 sales in the last seven days. Or you might maybe want a more homogeneous distribution. So you want the collection to have at least 3000 holders because you don't want just like 50 people to have like 500 uh, or like even more NFTs. So because, you know, homogeneous distribution is better. Actually, I'm just going to explain why it is better in the analysis section. But anyway, you got the idea. So when you do this, uh, you can filter the collections that are relevant to your filters. Uh, just play around with them. Probably are going to develop your own strategies as well. All right. So let's go to uh, Little Pudgies. Uh, let's check their price. I, yeah, it's 0.22. I just wanted to double check it. So if you click on the analysis part, this is where the magic happens. Uh, you see, actually, they have been pumping a lot, right? Uh, we didn't pick this collection for nothing. Actually, it was relevant to our filters. So it actually brought a collection that is about to pump or have been pumping. So here, what you can see is you can see the historical floor price. This is also 100% for free at this for now. Um, you can see if the collection is trending right now or if it is has trended or maybe falling down now a little bit. I think the other uh, Penguin collection have been pumping so maybe it uh, affected this one you also have to do your own research but this will provide you with the analytical data then you can see the floor price so actually this collection uh, don't have so much resistance on the floor so it can uh, actually uh, reach to a higher point because sometimes you will see uh, higher bars here which means that there is a barrier that there is a floor strength that so if there is the bar count is low i mean like if there is only 20 nfts here in this range it will be easier for nft to break that range so you can analyze them as well so you can just play around uh, make a normal distribution and it will give you a good idea so then you can see the sales and rankings chart here you will see the sales price and the ranking of the uh, NFTs. Most likely the uh, top ones will be higher ranking. So you can see how much the high rankings are being sold here. So this is uh, rank 326 and it got sold for 0.39, which is well above the floor price. Then uh, you can see the owners, how the owner can't change. I think we had entered a filter about the owner count in our filters as well. Uh, then you can see, this is very important, NFTs per owner. In a collection, you would want somebody, you would want many people have uh, to have a few NFTs, not a couple people to have so many. So for instance, it is a nice distribution. There is uh, more than 4,000 people who are holding just one NFT. And then there is almost 1,000 people who are holding only two NFTs. However, there is this wallet or this person who is holding almost 800 NFTs. Again, I hope my head is not closing it. Let me just do it this way. <coughs> Actually, we will see who this person is very soon. However, just keep in mind that if in a, collect if in a collection there are so many holders like this, 
Uh, this is a good thing because then they can dump the floor if they don't agree with the project, if they need liquidity, if they don't agree with what the collection uh, owners are doing anymore. Anyway, like, so you would want to people uh, to, so you would want the collection to have uh, a good distribution. Let's go to the top owners and who, see who this person is. This also might be the collection vault. But uh, this system is going to show you 9x, 9x, 9x. I, I, I think I know this account. Anyway, this one, yeah, you can see all the uh, penguins. This is a different one, but maybe he's into penguins. So, yeah, this person has a lot of uh, NFTs, including Pudgies. Little Pudgies. Is this how it is written? Yeah, I think this one. It was this one, right? Yeah. So, as you see, he has like many, many, many little Pudgies. All right, so uh, you can make the vault analysis here and see the distribution here. Uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, this is 100% for free. Go ahead, enjoy it. Uh, you can see the count of the active listings. <coughs> so if the active listings has been pumping, it's not a good thing for the collection because obviously if there's more supply, the price might go down, but also it's not the only dynamic. There are other things like the listings. As you see here, there was a pump in the listings. At this particular time, 50 NFTs were delisted. So the reason people delist their NFTs is because there is an expectation. Maybe there was an uh, announcement that was made. Maybe the increase in the original NFT collection uh, gave people the expectation that the floor price of this particular collection is going to rise as well. You know, like it's like Econ 101. It's all about expectations. However, what we can see in the data is if there is more daily listings, since the supply is going down, given all the other things, all the other variables are uh, being constant, the floor might go up. Then you can search for the look for the volume and it is uh, movement sales. I'm not going to go into details. They are just like simple uh, graphs. You can see them yourself. Actually, there was a quite a big pump here. Anyway, uh, go ahead. I, I don't want to make the video like four hours. So uh, if you have, you have any questions, just uh, hop over to Discord and we can discuss about them. However, this part is extremely important. This is the blue chip comparison. And this shows you in the long term if a project is likely to succeed or not. So what happens here, it sh uh, we list the big collections, big blue chips here. They have a certain criteria of having a certain daily sales, a total volume and a certain floor price. So they are all big collections here. In this collection, there are 249 Mutant Ape Yacht Club uh, holders who are also holding... 1300 little pudgies so these guys uh, are less likely to be paper hand right or they are more likely to be diamond hands so you would want as many board ape members azuki members doodle members in your collection in the collection that you are interested in it shows that because it's also an expectation game as well as i just mentioned people watch the wallet of these people so some of them are probably whales uh, what happens is when they start buying from a different collection, the price pumps. That's what happened to Mebits. If I'm not wrong, Bored Apes bought a significant amount of Mebits, which made the price pump. Actually, we can go over and uh, you, you do it yourself. Just go to the Mebits collection and see what happened and who are holding the uh, NFTs and when it pumped. So, uh, yeah, you can see who are holding them. Uh, which collection owners have the most also you can go to the holder comparison this in default brings the board api club however you might want to see how many punks are holding little pudgies so this person has eight punks and he has four pudgies you can also go to his wallet and see like what he's doing uh it's not a big deal i guess but like yeah, you can just go over and uh examine their movements and this one has the highest uh, number of lil pudgies and he's also holding one crypto bank this is for free go ahead use it uh, see what we are also going to add a couple more uh, graphs that we have been working on uh, so for instance so what happened with this one is if i'm not wrong uh, 
they had a recent pump here and this is when the board AAP Yacht Club members started buying Mibits. So if you go to blue chip comparison, you will see that there are a, there is a significant number of board AAP Yacht Club members and they also own a very significant number of uh, Mibits. I will go ahead and show you how the bidding works on your mobile phone. We actually haven't announced it officially, but it's already working on your phones. Uh, but we are just going to make the user interface a little, a little bit more user friendly, but uh, you can go ahead and test it. So right now I'm showing a video which is demonstrating the private key. Uh, so private key bidding is the same logic with the web version. You enter the private key, you enter your settings, default bid, max bid, whatever. When you submit your bits, the system is working on your mobile phone and it starts sending bits. So let's see. Yeah, the, yeah then it, this is literally the same logic. And then it starts sending bits. Uh, that's pretty much all the same logic, but it's on your mobile phone. And then there is the other version, which is for the uh, fun uh, for the lifetime members it is the same logic as the web version as well so what happens is this time the system is doing the same but it is popping up to sign message so you have to sign it you can do it with your finger or whatever uh, application you use we also have a mobile application that's coming on the way uh, that is the first impression video <laughs> pretty much uh, it's not so far away i think it's going to take probably a couple weeks maybe even a month but as you see it on the screen, uh, we have developed a big portion of it. So the analysis I talked about, the search screens that we talked about, uh, there is going to be many utilities in it. So you can see what is going on here. Like it's actually all the stuff we talked about, but it is in your mobile phone. All right. Actually, there are other stuff that, you know what? Let me talk about one more thing. Then I'm just going to, let, oh, something got listed here, you see. And I don't know if you noticed the catching sound and I don't know if my big head is closing it, but yeah, something got listed. All right, so I'm just going to, something else got listed as well. I think this time you must have heard the catching sound. I'm just going to talk about the <coughs> trade count because that's kind of important. And then I'm going to maybe show you a little bit on the Chrome extension that I'm just going to stop the video. <coughs> All right, so. There are different calculation methods. One of them is trade count on and one of them is trade count off. If I'm not wrong, uh, okay, I'm not going to name other uh, softwares because it might change, uh, but most of them is calculating it with trade count on, but there are some specific ones who calculate them as trade count off as their default methods. So what does it mean? As you see, uh, when there are rankings here, there is the trade count segment here as well. It means that this particular NFT is having a value from its, its from the number of its trade counts. This one has six trades, this one has 19 trades. So this is actually carrying this one uh, above. So what, like, uh, actually it's up to the collection owners. Sometimes they want it to be counted, sometimes they don't. In general, uh, the trade count is on, but Still, I would suggest if there are so many NFTs that are on the top rankings because of the trade count, you might want to turn it off. Uh, you generally don't want an NFT to be the rarest one because it has so many trades. That's a site uh, recommendation for you, but you have to do your own research and uh, learn about it. If you didn't get what I'm talking about, hop on the Discord ask about it either me or the other more experienced members are going to show you uh, what i'm talking about but as you see some rankings significantly change because of the trade count of some might still stay here because maybe they're getting uh, good rarity valuation from the other trades as well but as you noticed it is changing a lot uh, in the rankings for not for every collection it's going to matter though because Sometimes they will have equally distributed trade counts, but just play around with it so you will see what I mean. All right, let me actually let me go to our Discord and did something else get revealed? No, it's the same thing. I will show you a little bit about the profit sharing of our members are doing. So this uh, user dice 
uh, it's the first one he said and it, actually he's a free user because right now if you are a uh, i will show yeah this one uh, doldrums he is a founding member because he has this you know a little rocket However, DICE or DICE is a free user, so he managed to make some profit. It's not a super big one, but it is still a profit. We can actually go at, uh, to the profit calculation and see how much he made exactly. But I think, yeah, this is a decent one, a couple hundred dollars maybe. <coughs> so, and then there are the founding members here. There are big profits, there are small profits. There is Brainiac, he has been posting all day. So these are actually rather small ones. This one is a little bit bigger and then there are ones which are couple Ethereums. So how come, right? Like there are the small ones uh, and then there are ones, I'm just going to, this is, a, this is one that I made, a small one. Uh, I also posted the uh, calculation, not too bad, right? Uh, but why? Like why is Kelly is making significantly higher? Uh, I will find one where uh, Kelly made like, I don't know, three, four, five Ethereum. Uh, the reason is, yeah, for instance, this one. Uh, Kelly managed to buy it for 5.55 and sell it for 8.25. At least there is like a couple Ethereum uh, net profit there. But I don't know if you noticed, Kelly waited for six days. Probably the reason for it is either Kelly managed to bid for specific rankings and get one. So as I, if you remember, uh, I told you that the system can make bids on particular range of rarities, maybe top 300, top 500, or maybe Kelly managed to get something from the trade bidding. So with this kind of NFTs, when it is rarer or when it has a specific trade, you might want to wait or you will have to wait a couple of days. So it's a trade-off. Like you can make, uh, you can just bid on regular nfts or the whole collection and then you can resell it on the floor price whenever you buy it or you can be done more precious nfts and then you wait for some time and then probably you will have higher profit yeah so uh yeah, there, there are different strategies you can go this is an open channel by the way you can come here you can ask the questions uh you have in mind actually there is like quite many uh, profit sharings i would say maybe two three hundred maybe even more uh just if you have any question in your mind just shoot it here uh so for the last thing i'm going to go over the uh chrome extension chrome extension is also 100 percent for free uh probably most of you guys know about it what happens in the chrome extension is it shows you the ranking of the nft percentile of the nft uh, lower the better in other worlds uh, as it goes to i mean if it is five percent it means that this nft is in the top five percent and it is better it has a better ranking than 95 percent uh, of the collection and you can run it here as well uh, when you run it it is going to give you a summary let's actually you know what let's go to a different collection and show let me show you how it works how it loads let's go to lazy lions and you will see that it will pop up on the thumbnail here and then when you click on it it will show you uh, a more summarized listing here you can know what was the last sale what was what's the price score uh, you can uh, filter them you can uh, sort them actually uh, it will also give you the summary on the site and it will load more as you uh, scroll down on the page or you can also go ahead and play with it so uh, i don't know when you will be watching this video we will have our uh, lifetime mint tomorrow uh, it will start for the whitelist then it will be in the public sale i don't know if any will be left for the public but you might also want to be considering to buy it on the second market meaning open sea so I would suggest everyone to obviously watch this video, but you made it this far. Watch the other videos because I kind of rushed in this video. There are other utilities talking about, there are other videos talking about specific features and specific features that we are adding, testing right now. Uh, I, if I were you and if I was considering, I would just go to Discord, talk to people, read about the uh, roadmap, read about the profit sharing, ask my questions. Uh, talk to admins or other users. Everybody is very friendly and we try to uh, share as much as we can. 
yeah go ahead you know what let me show you one last thing then i'm i'm just going to finish the video so what happens is if you have a collection that uh, you want to we actually have more than 2000 collections maybe even 3000 live right now however if you have a collection that uh, you want to be ranked you want the rarities to be calculated uh, you can do what these users are doing right you can just come here and then type exclamation mark index and the collection url uh, so the system is going to calculate the rarities and when it is uh, ready it's going to tag you and let you know and then you can start bidding on it or you can do rarity sniping or whatever you want to do yeah there is actually a lot more things you can do in the system uh, so but i'm just i said i'm going to finish the video maybe i should i don't want to overload everybody i'm going to put the timestamps in the uh, description part i think i should have said it at the beginning but <laughs> i think it, but it happens right so anyway thank you for uh, listening and if you have any questions just ask it in the comments or ask it in the discord i'm more active there uh, have a good one everyone bye